to Courage in Flight or Courage TV. Our show celebrates everyday people who have taken courageous steps in their lives. I'm Dr. Tao Do, a communication coach for high performance professionals, and you can find out more about me at taocoach.com. Now today, I have a special guest with me. Her name is Adessa Barker. She's a lawyer, a former chef, and now a holistic coach. And she's gonna tell us all about what she's up to. Adessa Barker. Well, as Tao said, my name is Adessa Barker. And what I do is I am a holistic coach and I empower Christian women who want to depart from traditional careers, master leadership mindset, and learn the fundamentals of building thriving businesses so that they can live a life um, on purpose. What I've found is that most Christian women feel stuck in their careers. They feel like they are not living life on purpose. They're frustrated because they want to start their business, but worry that they don't have time, talent, or skills necessary to run a successful business. Most of them don't know what they need to do next, so they try to ignore the problem or they get caught up in life hoping that things will somehow fall into place. You know, as a teenager, I was homeless. I couldn't work or get into college because I didn't have documentation to work or go to college. In spite of that, I remained persistent and determined to find a way where there was none. I kept going to school and excelling. One day, one of the students at my high school invited me to her home. I usually didn't hang out with the student. When her mom saw me, she said to me, listen, I know that you're homeless and you have no way to stay and you have to stay here. Because of her incredible kindness, I was no longer homeless and ended up graduating from high school with honors. However, I still had the problem of getting into college. So I kept applying to colleges and one day, a letter came in the mail offering me a full academic scholarship to a school I had never applied to. Years later, I left a safe job to start a restaurant. And while people loved the food, due to poor experience, it was not profitable. Ultimately, I had to make the decision to close the business and went back to work. As an entrepreneur, that was a very difficult decision for me because I love having my own business. I love the ability to create something for other people and to serve others. I knew that I was supposed to help women, but I just didn't know how to start and what to do. I felt afraid and, I didn't, and that I didn't have the talent and the skills to run a business that would pay me adequately, where I would be able to pay my bills so through trial and error, I learned about a system that really, really works. So during those difficult times, I learned the power of the mind. I learned to trust God, and I never looked at my situation to determine my destiny. My situation was bleak, and every sign was painted with disappointment, but I kept hoping and believing. Because of my experience, I know that with a reshifting of the mind, your life will be revolutionized. I have been fired from jobs, rejected by my parents, faced health scares, lost a sibling and a parent, faced endless disappointments, but still I rise. I view every day as an opportunity to do something incredible. Having experienced struggles, I know that those experiences prepared me for this, this moment. I am passionate about working with women because I know the struggles they face in wanting to start a business. I am passionate about, about this work because I live through it and I know that I can help women create successful companies and live an amazingly fulfilling life. Based on my experience, I learned three important lessons. And the first thing is you must slow down to speed up in life. The second thing is that in order to take control of your life, awareness to two critical factors are absolutely fundamental. And the third thing is that the blueprint of successful people is their relentless focus on one thing. And I'm gonna expound on this one thing. So successful people focus relentlessly on the good. And what I have found is that successful people, they, um, 
when they focus on what is good, they are energized and it creates momentum for, for them to complete their goals. By relentless focus on the good, you're actually able to keep things in perspective and not get stuck harping over small things. Because our society is obsessed with finding problems, we are ingrained to look for problems. If you go into most offices and eavesdrop on conversations, you will find that most people are absolutely, um, they spend a, a vast amount of time you know, talking about their problems. When we highlight problems, we are training our brains to look for problems and thus we find endless problems wherever we go. This relentless focus on problems seeps our energy and robs our creativity. We are left feeling exhausted, frustrated, tired, and defeated by life. On the contrary, successful people know that the key to being a high performer is to focus on the good. While they are aware of problems, it doesn't consume their life and gets very little attention. They use their time and energy to focus on the good things because those things propel them forward. If you are tired of being tired and tired of worrying about what's going wrong, about what's not working, then all you have to do is focus relentlessly on the good things. I guarantee there are good things in your life right now that you are not seeing because your brain is trained to look for problems. The key to being successful is to focus on the good things no matter what. Focus on the things that are working and your life will be transformed. Here's an example. In the Bible, there was a warrior named Goliath. Now Goliath was a champion. He was a giant. He was intimidating. He was massive. Um, so day after day, he came out and yelled threats at the Israelites, daring them to send a man to fight him. The soldiers in the Israelite army saw Goliath and how big he was, and they were terrified. None of the soldiers had the courage to face Goliath except one young shepherd boy named David. Unlike all the other soldiers, when David saw Goliath, he did not focus on his size. Instead, he said, when a lion or a bear came and carried off a sheep from my flock, I went after it, struck it, and rescued the sheep from its mouth. When it turned on me, I seized it by its hair, struck it, and killed it. I have killed both lion and bear. Goliath will be like one of them because he defied the armies of the living God. So David's ability to focus on his past success, in other words, the good thing, gave him the power, the confidence, and the momentum he needed to defeat this current giant. In the same way, when we zoom in on our problems, we magnify the problem and it becomes much bigger. This eventually causes us stress, anxiety, worry, and fear. In the end, we are left paralyzed by fear and, and, and and unable to handle the challenges in our life appropriately. If we choose to shift our focus to the good things, to the things that are working, then all the stress, anxiety, worry, and fear will start to melt away and we will have the energy and confidence we need to accomplish our goals. This is a simple principle that if implemented over and over, it will yield tremendous results. And if you're just tuning in, this is Courage in Flight or Courage TV. I'm here with a special guest, Adessa Barker, who is a holistic coach. So Adessa, you just share with us about these three secrets that all successful people use, correct? Yes. So the first secret was slow down so you can speed up? Yeah, you must slow down in life to speed up. What is, can you tell us more about that? Yeah, absolutely. So the idea is that, you know, so many of us, we are sort of like an autopilot, you know, mm -hmm. we live our lives based on a template and we're not really consciously aware of what's going on in our environment. So when you take some time to slow down, to meditate, to think about, well, how do I want my life to look? How do I want right. it to feel? Then we're really going to live our lives on purpose and we're not sort of, you know, sleepwalking through life. Mm -hmm. and, and that's sort of the idea behind slowing down to speed up. Yeah, you know, Tony Robbins likes to say there's the science of achievement and then the art of fulfillment. And what he talks about is many people are constantly achieving, reaching all their goals and their career successes, and then inside they feel unfulfilled. Like there's a little emptiness inside. Is that what you're talking about? So maybe slowing down will allow them to feel 
more into their body and into their soul. Yeah, absolutely. You know, when you slow down, you know, when you're not sort of reacting and you're just like sort of in, you know, autopilot, you know, right. you're really able to think about how you want your life to look. And when you do that, you can live a life on purpose, a meaningful life, because a lot of people feel empty, they feel unfulfilled, and it's because they are not taking the time. They feel like they don't have the time to slow down and sort of marinate over the type of life they want. And as a result, their life is very, very chaotic. Mm -hmm. um, so. Yeah, the big thing that everyone says nowadays is, I'm busy. Yes. You ask anybody. It's like a badge of honor. <laughs> I'm busy. I'm busy. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I've tried this technique, slowing down. And what I found is it can be quite uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. As the person who's constantly, you know, trying to move fast. And, you know, my whole life as an engineer, it's yeah. all about efficiency. Can we speed up things? And can we make machines move faster? So it can be quite uncomfortable. How would you advise someone to like, process that? Yeah, absolutely. You know, I find in our Western society, we are so boggled down with stress and it's mm -hmm. because we are ingrained with this idea that we have to rush through everything and that we have limited time, we have to do everything and we have to be perfect. Right. And then that results in you getting the same thing that everyone else gets, mm -hmm. heart attack, you know, high blood uh. pressure and all these other things. So we have to reshift and focus on the things that really matter in our lives. Mm -hmm. And that is living your life on purpose and taking the time. It might be uncomfortable at first, mm -hmm. but you know, you first you try, you take five minutes in the morning, you know, meditate, think about your day, think about how you want it to feel, you know, how do I want my life to look, how do I want to show up, how do I want to serve people, so you can actually be conscious and present in your life, and you find that you're going to reduce a lot of stress, you know, because yeah. we're just like going through the motion of things, and we're not really taking that time to still ourselves. Right. There are so many lessons from being quiet, waking up super early in the morning, having a really powerful morning routine. I mean, that's absolutely important. Mm -hmm. And people feel like they don't have time. Well, yeah. maybe if you turn the TV off, and maybe right. if you, you know, pay attention, you can, you can find time. There's lots of time mm -hmm. to do the things that should be important to us. So, you know, it's, it's certainly possible. It might be difficult, but totally doable. So what's your morning routine? So okay. I try to wake up every morning at 5.30. 5.30, yes. wow. And Wait, an alarm clock? Um, yes. Okay. Sometimes I wake up without it, you yeah. know. Um, and then I have a five minute of quiet time. I close my eyes and I just think about all the things I'm grateful for. And I really put myself in that place, you know, like mm -hmm. there's nothing going on. And then I take five minutes and I just think about God and all of the great things about mm -hmm. God. And then I try to go for about a 20 minute walk. And okay. then I come back. Just around the neighborhood. Yeah, a walk yeah. or a jog. And then I like to read something really powerful. Right now I'm reading a book um, called Power Thoughts and it just focuses okay. on really shaping your thinking to create the life that you want. And how, you know, oftentimes people feel like they can't control their mind because it's like, well, I can't control what happens, it's just thoughts, no, right. but those thoughts really, you know, propel you in a certain direction, and if you want your life to be powerful and you want to, you know, have that great life, you need to be, mm -hmm. you need to mind your thoughts, so, um, and then I pray, and then I head on out, and since I've been doing this morning routine, I found that I show up, and people in my office, they're like, Odessa, you're so happy, you're so bubbly, yeah. what has happened? <laughs> You know, and it's because I'm taking time to really decide how I want to show up. Before, mm -hmm. I'm like, oh, I woke up, I'm, I'm just, I didn't get enough sleep, I'm just reacting, I'm snappy, right. and I'm, but that's not the person that I want to be. So when mm -hmm. I take that time in the morning to say, well, who do I want to be? How do I want to serve? Yeah. You know, when I have someone, you know, I ride my bike to work, if someone tries to cut me off in traffic, it doesn't affect me because I'm like, that's not who I want to be. I'm not going to. Flip, flip, you know, curse right. them out or do anything in a, you yeah. know, it's like that's not who I am. So it's yeah. really, really important mm -hmm. and I wish everyone could have some sort of powerful morning routine that would really set the course of their day. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah. So now what's your secret number two? So secret number two is that um, most successful people um, focus on two critical factors, mm -hmm. you know, and we have to be mindful of these critical okay. factors, and those factors are a time and change. Okay. Um, and it seems very simple because yeah. people are like, well, you know, time, change, whatever. <laughs> but you see, 
if you think about Blockbuster, you know, this mm -hmm. was a company that, you know, a lot of people went I to guess. Blockbuster, mm -hmm. they, you know, you pick up movies, and they could have been the next Netflix, they could have been maybe right. the next YouTube, had they paid attention to what mm -hmm. was happening, you know, people wanted more convenience, you know, right. and they felt like, we have time, nothing's gonna change, people are yeah. always gonna come in and spend two hours trying to pick out movies, no, right? right? So, when we pay attention to time, and change, then we are not left surprised, like, oh my God, I didn't even see this coming. Well, you didn't see it coming because you weren't paying attention, yes. right? And then when we realize that change is inevitable, mm -hmm. we make certain decisions. We don't make permanent decisions based on temporal situations, yes. right? Because things are always shifting and right. we are creatures of habit. We expect things to stay the same mm -hmm. and that's not realistic. So yeah. whether you want to or not, this moment that we have right here, we're never getting this back. So when you understand these things, you can show up in a just in a, an amazing way because you're like this moment is meaningful. Like mm -hmm. I want to be present here with my friend. I'm not going to spend time here at dinner on my cell phone. I'm going to put my phone away mm -hmm. because I'm going to value this moment here. Mm -hmm. You know, and we're really able to like contribute to society and in doing that and serving other people, you're serving yourself. So mm -hmm. that's why time and change is just very important that you sort of understand those two and you know and bring awareness to yes it, right? absolutely yeah so what's happening around in the environment what's the time period yeah, yeah. and absolutely. what's your third and my third, third one is that you know and i talked a bit about it it's just that you know you have to successful people they focus on one thing and and that's the good you right. know and for us as humans, we're like, you know, I go to work, you know, and I have to do, right now I'm doing evaluations for, for interns, and it's like, well, okay, well, what was the problem? You mm -hmm. know, how do they perform? And you know, you're looking to find the fault, you know? Right. We're trained to see problems, and that is just a, I feel it, it's a very antiquated way of doing things. Mm -hmm. You know, we need to shift to a different place, and we need to operate from a place of power, you know? Mm -hmm. what, what, are, what are you good at? Where are your strengths? And when you do that, people really come alive. Yes. You know, people feel, people, so many people dread having an, an evaluation at work right. because it's like, oh my God, they're gonna, all my faults. And, yeah. you know, but what, are, what about the good things that I'm doing? Let's mm -hmm. talk about that and let's play on that, but we don't do that. Um, and when you do that in life, you have the energy, you have the vitality, you have the confidence to step out on faith and do something courageous. But when mm -hmm. you're trained to constantly look for problems, you, it just drains you and it, it clips your wings and you never really want to do anything bold in your life. Okay. Yeah, I totally get it. Well, thanks for being here with yeah. us. How can people reach out to you? Um, yeah, it's a great question. So people can find me on social media, um, on Instagram or Facebook at Adessa Barker. Um, you can follow me. My name is pretty unique, so you should not have a problem finding me. Adessa, A-D-E-S-S-A -S -S -A -S -S -A Barker, B-A-R-K-E-R. Uh, -E awesome. Well, thanks for being here with me. Thank you so much. Hi, and welcome back to Courage in Flight or Courage TV. I'm here with Adessa Barker, and we're cooking with courage today. So Adessa, you have a special recipe to show us? Yeah, I want to show you my yummy, super human smoothie bowl slash smoothie. Okay. So, depending on if you have time, you know. Got it. All right, so you ready to dive in? Yeah. All right, cool. So we just start um, with some water, preferably right. cold water. So this is like a measuring cup in here. You want to add about a cup of water. Yeah. Um, and to that, we, if you have almond milk or hemp milk or any kind of plant milk, you mm -hmm. can just add it instead of water, but I don't. So I'm going to start by making my own plant milk. Okay. Maybe so I make my own hemp milk. So I just Okay, so add, this is water and... Yeah, just water and some hemp seeds, and I just add it in there. Got it. And super simple, and that's it. And then we're just gonna give it a quick blend All to right. create our um, plant milk, if this could get on there. Okay, great. And then we're just gonna let that go for... Yeah. Okay, as you can see, it's... No. That's incredible. Yeah, super yeah, cool. Yeah, water just turned white. Yeah, it's like Amazing. water into wine. <laughs> and then we're going to That's add... Magic here. Yeah, since we want it to be a little thicker, we're going to add some ice. Okay. Um, 
I love that ice container. I, know. You know, I used to have these plastic ones that's super hard to get it out of. Yeah, that one's super easy. Yeah. So then we're just going to add some purple carrots. It's purple about, carrots? Yeah, this is about a half a cup. Where do you buy purple carrots? Um, I get them at Mom's or any sort of local um, grocery store. And then this is about a half a cup of raw red beets. Wow. Super nutritious. Wow. Um, and then we are going to add some, about a half a cup of um, raspberries. It's like we're making a vegetable salad. Yeah. <laughs> With the beets and the carrots. Yeah, yum. Okay. All yum. And then a little, about a tablespoon of um, ginger. Okay. And then... The raspberry ginger. Yeah, raspberry ginger. Um, and then we're just gonna add some frozen banana just for uh, some sweetness. And this yeah. really helps with sweetness. So this is about, about a half a cup. I mean, you could just eyeball this, you know, you blend it up if you feel like you need a little bit more, you want it a little sweeter, you could just, you know, add some more um, bananas in there. Yeah. And then lastly, we're just gonna hit it up with some fruit. Yeah, so, you know, never mind me. <laughs> yeah. So um, we have fresh apple here. Yeah, so um, you just want to, like, do that. And then we're just going to put the top back on. Got it. Um, okay, so frozen banana. You just chop up banana and put it in the freezer. Yeah. Got it. Um, and then this is, I really like to make sure that my smoothie is packed with nutrients. So this is a um, some maca powder and some pre- Biotics in here. Wow. So really so how, good for you. Is that in a container? How do you buy you that? You buy that in a powder. You can buy it from Amazon or you could buy it at Whole Foods or any grocery store. Now we're just going to give this a quick blend. want to let it go for a couple of minutes and I need to hit it up with lastly some lime yeah. some organic lime in here so good so you have a little sweetness from the banana and then a little sourness from the lime and the raspberry yeah nice this is such a great way to power your morning <laughs> Great, and we are ready to rock and roll. So yeah. depending on what type of time you have in the morning, okay. you could just pour this in a glass. And look at the color on wow. that. Isn't yeah. that stunning? It's like um, brilliant neon pink. Yeah. <laughs> um, and if you have more time, uh -huh. you can actually go ahead and do a smoothie bowl. I often advise my clients, take time and savor your food. Create yeah. a nice smoothie bowl on the go. Look at that. Look at the color wow. on that. You want to add some of the toppings in there? Sure. What can I add on here? Um, you can add any of the toppings. Okay. You want to add some, a little granola, just play yeah. with it. Just make it really organic. A, uh, a spoon granola. Yeah. Okay. I just like hit it up with some cacao nibs. Yeah. It's really pretty. Mm. Want to do some flakes. toasted. Yeah. yeah. Toasted coconut flakes. Yeah, and then let's do um, some of the chai seeds. Chai seeds. Yeah. So what do they taste like? Are they like? They're super crunchy, and I think that they're really mild. Mm. Um, and then just I'm going to cut up some of this. This is dry uh, papaya, which looks very interesting, sort of yeah. freakish. But it adds a really good texture to Check your out salad. What it looks like. Wow. I know. <laughs> kind of scary but <laughs> looks are yeah. deceiving literally like a um, wrinkly <laughs> yeah and then Corn. one of the fun things I like to add to uh -huh. my um, smoothie bowl is some chai this is so oh my god I love it look at that it's wow. just so it's this thing right so yeah how do you make it all whitish so you soak it in any kind of milk that you like oh. so like a tablespoon of that to about four tablespoons of milk and you stir it up and yeah. it's in your fridge and you can top this with granola and anything and it's like a yum sort of snack. Okay. And, and then I just add some some yogurt on top. Okay, so this is plant-based yogurt. Yeah, it's so Not good. Even milk. I love this mm. yogurt. It's just 
Yeah. Delectable. And then there you have it, a yummy, amazing, energizing smoothie bowl. You wow, want to try show, it? Let's show our viewers. Look at how beautiful the colors are. It's just pink and white and all these flaky deliciousness. Yeah. All right, let's give it a shot. So where can you we find these? You shouldn't mix it up. You should just like oh. try it separately <laughs> so you can, but it's fine. You make it your own, but it's just, you know, you get the different layers of flavor as you spoon in. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's nice and crunchy. Yeah. It has a just nice try, sour. I love it. So where can we find these recipe? You can find them on my website at www.adessabarker.com and that's adessa, A-D-E-S-S-A dot barker, B-A-R-K-E-R dot com. Yeah. Wonderful. I love the color. So when would you eat smoothies or smoothie bowls? Oh, on the go. And before I forget, I just wanted to show you um, another really quick way of just like grabbing um, sure. something in the morning to go. Yeah. These, you can buy these at container store. Mm -hmm. And if you go to Whole Foods, these are selling for like five, six dollars. And this is like a really great way to energize wow. your morning on the mm -hmm. go. This is just turmeric ginger with a hit of apple cider vinegar. And it's all raw with some cayenne pepper. And it's just amazing anti-inflammatory -infl um, wow. shot for in the morning. So do you drink these? Mm -hmm. OK. You just Yeah, try it. Shot. It's spicy, it's but it's a turmeric, ginger, cayenne oh. with raw apple cider vinegar. It's it has, really jump starts your yeah, morning. It has It'll a wake kick. you up. Who needs coffee, right? Mm -hmm. Wow, it's like drinking kombucha almost. Yeah, there's a really nice kick and sour and super refreshing. I really love this smoothie. You know, I always think of it. Smoothies like bananas, strawberries, and peach, but this is a whole new <laughs> level of flavor. Yeah, it's, it's fun. I just love the color. Mm -hmm. Well, I love it. Yeah, I'm glad that you like it. Yeah, thanks for coming. Yeah, with us today. absolutely. Thanks for having me. Adessa Parker, everyone. And that's all the time that we have for today, folks. Thank you for tuning in to Courage TV. My name is Dr. Tao Do. I'm a communication coach. I'll see you next time and keep going and reaching for your dream and being courageous in your life. Bye. -bye.